So what we're going to do is cover the best way to determine the conformal stability of regular alkanes. Now usually when we try to determine the stability of alkanes, we look at their Newman projections like we have over here. And we look for certain things. So what are those certain things? One of them is called being eclipsed. So when we have a, a substituent and another one on the back carbon, both right behind each other exactly. That's called being eclipsed. And that's the worst type of interaction you can have because you have steric hindrance. You have electron clouds bumping into each other and you don't want that. The best interaction, however, is something called an anti-interaction, where the two groups are exactly 180 degrees apart from each other. That way they have the least amount of interaction possible. So we're going to look for those two things, including a third thing called the Gauche interaction, which is just a 60 degree angle interaction, which is what we see normally between any group at all. So to start off, we're going to look for any molecules that have eclipsed interactions. So what do we have? We have on this one and on this one we have eclipsed interactions. Now how do we know which one's better than the other? Well, if you have big groups like these ethyl groups which I have labeled by ET and methyl groups labeled by ME, if they're big they have large electron clouds and so if they're right next to each other they're going to end up interfering way too much. So we're going to look where the smallest groups are eclipsed to each other. So here let's look at it. We have an ethyl-ethyl interaction versus an ethyl hydrogen interaction. This is better somehow. A methyl methyl interaction and a methyl hydrogen interaction. This is better. And then a hydrogen hydrogen interaction that has almost no difference. And then you have a methyl ethyl. So since the two biggest groups, which is the ethyl and the ethyl, are eclipsed, this makes this way worse than this one. So this is better than that one. And that's just because of their giant electron clouds. And you can even compare one side by side and figure out by actual values that this is worse than that. But we don't need actual values. You can just compare certain groups. And so let's compare this second, this third one right here. We have no eclipse interactions versus this one. So we already know this one is better than that because we have zero eclipse interactions. Remember, eclipse interactions are the worst possible thing. Now, how do we compare this one to this one. Well, we have an ethyl group here and another ethyl group. They're doing a Gauche interaction. So that's just 60 degree angles. While over here, the ethyl and the ethyl are anti. So the two biggest groups are actually anti here. So that's one positive. The other positive is that we can actually compare each and every Gauche interaction. So here we have an ethyl-ethyl interaction, an ethyl-methyl, and a methyl-methyl. Now what's similar over here? We do have that same ethyl-methyl and we say we have that methyl-methyl. But instead of an ethyl-ethyl interaction, we just have another ethyl-methyl. And since a methyl group is smaller than an ethyl group, this actually makes it better. So let's just start putting numbers here. We're going to put this as 6, 5, 4. And this will be better than number 4. Now what about these last two? So let's look at them. We have ethyl here and then another ethyl completely anti to it. So it's the same as this one. However, instead of having a methyl-methyl interaction over here, the two methyls are actually anti to each other as well. So this actually is slightly better. We can even compare the Gauche interactions. You have one, two, and three Gauche interactions here, while over here you only have one and two. And if you try to consider the ones with the hydrogens, don't even worry about those because they have almost no value whatsoever. Hydrogens are very small. So not only do you have less Gauche interactions, but you also have the two biggest groups anti, and the second two biggest groups are also anti. So this is better than that one, and we can put that at number two. Now, what about this last one? We have an ethyl, which is another ethyl over here. Okay, these two ethyls are the same. Then you look at the second biggest, if you look at the biggest group, you're like, all right, is it anti to it? Well, the biggest group here is a methyl, and it is also anti. And then you look at the two second biggest groups, and they're also anti just like this one. So you're like, this is exactly the same one as this one, but instead we just have a methyl instead of this, et instead of this ethyl. So how do we compare it? Well, a methyl group is a smaller group. So that does mean that this is technically better. However, I will tell you this. When you are comparing Gauche interactions, this is just a future tip. When you're looking at these interactions, a methyl-methyl interaction versus an ethyl-methyl interaction they actually have very similar values when it comes to steric strain. They're not that much different. 
So I would not worry about this too much unless you got to a straight up comparison. Like over here, we might say like, well, you have an ethyl methyl here versus an ethyl ethyl. What's the difference? Well, here, the difference is that the two biggest groups aren't being eclipsed. We're focusing on the two biggest groups. That's the one of the most important things. You're looking at the two biggest groups. Are they anti? And then you're going to look at the eclipsed or are they eclipsed? And that almost determines usually how something is stable or not. So this is actually not that much different, but we're still going to put it at a higher rank simply because the biggest, second biggest group is a smaller group than compared to this one. So I'm going to reiterate all the steps to determine alkane conf conformation stability. You want the two biggest groups to be anti. Then after the two biggest groups are anti, just like those three, you want less gauche interactions. And then after you have less gauche interactions, you also might want to look for second biggest groups being anti. After that, you're just simply going to, if the two molecules are exactly identical, just like these two, you're going to look, all right, does any one of them have the biggest groups as smaller groups? If the biggest groups are smaller groups, there's less, inter less interactions and therefore it is better. So those are the four different things that you can look for when you're trying to determine this stability.